Hello, welcome back. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get the t uh, chance to speak to Menelik last game, um, but we are now going to be watching Max versus Taron. Um, obviously, Taron we had previously on the stream. Uh, what do you expect to see from him in this game? Yeah, so obviously we saw Taron's team earlier. It's the uh, Mokro Tailwind uh, team, I'd like to call it. Um, depends what uh, we see what Max has got. Uh, Max has sort of got what I would call standard palance. So I think i like to see Taron bring uh, the Tailwind to start off with. Here we go, us. And Max up with the Chiyu and the Among Us. And then uh, Max with the Flutter Main and the Backscalibur. Yeah, the Backscalibur really putting a lot of pressure on. Um, threatening the Among Us and also threatening to do a lot of damage to the Chiyu. Yeah, it's one of those Pokemon it, it can just come out the gate and do so much um, so much damage. It's either got the uh, the Glaive Rush or the Icicle Crash. And um, obviously Chiyu, if Chiyu attacks into it with a Fire Type move, that will boost his attack with the Thermal Exchange. Yeah, and this Chi was actually the safety goggles, no uh, focus sash, so he can just get felled in one uh, sw uh, hit. Yeah, so all it takes is one attack to take it down. Um, and particularly the Flutter Main sat beside as well, there's so much damage that could potentially come from Max's side. Yeah, the Flutter Main obviously is Terry Fairy for uh, uh, added damage on the Dazzling Gleams and Moonblast. We're going to see a Terra. Let's see which side it's from. And it looks like it's from Flutter Main. Flutter Main. Going into that Terra Fairy, um, so you'd be able to hit even harder um, on the other side, uh, particularly into the um, particularly into the Chiyu. Yeah, and we will see a Terra on Taran's side as well. And looks like it's going to be the the, the Among Us coming okay. out with the, uh, with Terra, the Terra Water, Water being able to resist Backscalibur's uh, Ice type attacks. So yeah, we just uh, await to see what moves have been clicked this turn. Chiu just protecting. Chiu going for it safe, going for protect. Just maybe scouting to see what um, what's going to be happening. Oh, but Max really, really good prediction on their side. Moonblast into the Amoongus. And it does take a 90 percent. And bring it into that very range, but still, I don't think we're going to see too much more of the uh, the Amoongus. Oh wow! Backscalibur predicting. The Chiyu to protect and the Amoongus is down. Turn one, Terra down, Amoongus down. And we're seeing a very similar trend to when we uh, had Taran on stream before. Uh, the Amoongus not really making too much of an impact, uh, being very passive, just sort of um, sitting there taking the damage. Yeah, and obviously not what Taran wants at all. He really needs to think about what he can do from this turn onwards to uh, alleviate the differential. Yeah, and um, the Great Tusk comes out, and that Great Tusk can't uh, Terra anymore. And it's going to be weak to those um, to those fairy type attacks from the Terra Fairy Flutter Main. Not a position it really wants to be in. Yeah, but the good thing is, obviously, it's a choice scarf set, so you would assume it would outspeed everything on Max's side. Yeah, you would hope it can um, get the get the drop on on the Flutter Main with the, maybe the headlong rush. And RK9 coming back out and just um, dropping that uh, dropping that attack on the Great Tusk. Yeah, I think a really safe play to uh, hopefully. Oh, Rock Slide from a. Uh... Taran does side. go fast, but not too much damage on... Oh, Flutterman oh. flinched! Oh no, that's awful. And Taran gets the nasty plot to take advantage of that situation. And there we go. So, so uh, well now, could be some information for Max, though. He knows that that Iron Tusk, uh, that Great Tusk is going to go first. And, um, however, it is locked into the Rock Slide now. Yeah, and I think if you're in Max position, you're not too upset, so long as you Flutterman I doesn't get flinched this turn. Yeah, you would, I mean... It'd be a bad day for Max if he gets to flinch yeah. twice in a row from Rock Slide. He's still threatening the KO on a uh, Terran's Great Tusk, for sure. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, um, the Great Tusk uh, still doesn't want to take any of those very moves, and he, he knows that he's taking Terran, an experienced right player, not going to risk his uh, Great Tusk like that. Yeah, exactly. And out comes the Gyarados, and uh, gets the an Intimidate off of his own. Um, on the Arcane name, particularly, that's going to be uh, going to hurt. But the Arcane is now leaving. And um, it's being swapped for the Ting Lu. So interesting. It's going to weaken uh, Max's Fluttermane, but also weaken Terran's Chiyu. However, you should hope that Fluttermane, being that Terra, uh, terra Fairy, doesn't mind too much um, the, the best of ruin. Chiyu's going to certainly come worse out of the two. Yeah, so really good play by Max. Uh, he uh, played it best of both worlds, where if the Gritos stayed in, he got Ting Lu and Fluttermane in a great position. 
but now Fluttermane has taken no damage uh, since last turn and can really still threaten a Moonblast. Yeah, it doesn't have to worry about the um, doesn't have to worry about the Rock Slide. Uh, most likely is faster than the Gyarados as well, so can hit it hard with either the the Moon Blast or even the Dazzling Gleam if he wants to sort of take them both out. Yeah, so obviously we're just seeing what the uh, Max is looking to click. I think Max is considering Dazzling Gleam, but uh, obviously depends yes. what. Uh, okay, he decides to. And Tinglu really threatens the Chiyu there. And uh, Flutterman going for the Moon Blast, going into the Gyarados, and doing a lot of damage there. Um, but the Nasty Block Heat Wave brings down to Red Health Flutterman. Well, does a significant amount of damage with that Gyarados. Oh, Life Orb Gyarados, there we go. And Stomping Tantrum going into that Chiyu. Oh, does a lot of damage, but does not uh, take the Chiyu down. So, really, uh, Flutterman is in the. We know Flutterman goes first. Um, so you think Dazzle and Gleam would be enough to take them both down. Yeah, and maybe Max could pull an interesting switch here. We could maybe switch out his Ting Lu to get something more favourable in, perhaps? Yeah, maybe just um, increasing the amount of damage input that um, that it does. Yeah, and obviously Max uh, thinking that's a good idea because uh, he sees the double KO and wants to get his Baxcalibur in for free. Here we go, yeah. Uh, although Chiu going for Protect, just, uh, just prolonging it, um, just make sure it stays out a bit longer. And we presume this is going to, to get the KO on the Gyarados. Yeah, I believe so. I think Gyarados uh, faints from here. And yeah, easily gets the KO. Um, so uh, Gyarados is down. Obviously, there's no uh, no more Intimidate. Um, although Baxter has a clear amulet, so not really a great uh, great deal. However, the Great Tusk is coming back out, which we know is faster. And Rock Slide is going to uh, also hurt the Baxter a lot as well. Yeah, and Terran obviously has to lock into a move here. Um, it's not many great moves to lock into, obviously. You can't lock into Earthquake because you're going to be hitting your own Chiyu. Uh, Headlong Rush is going to make you take uh, defense drops. So it's a really tough decision for Terran yeah. what to lock into. Does he sacrifice the uh, the Chiyu and go for the Earthquake? Is the, is the only sort of play I can make. But then whatever comes in afterwards also has to eat, um, eat it as well. Yeah, but Max also has the 4-2 advantage really meaning that he can control how this game goes yeah max able to do uh do what he actually does there goes to protect the game sort of in his um his hand at the moment it's it's almost up to taron to sort of um, try and catch up and uh, looks like he might be able to see with the rock slide yeah so the rock slide takes out Fluttermane, but if you're max you're not too upset with that uh now you know what taron's locked into so you can uh, plan accordingly yeah exactly i mean back is still not going to want to uh want to take that um, that rock slide. However, um, Ting Tinglu's coming in low health, also not going to want to. Um, he's going to have to hope this intimidate drop really gets um, brings the ta uh, the Tinglu out of the yeah. great and task. A, an attack drop really not good for Taran's great task. Um, and hopefully that gives Max kind of what it needs to survive a bit longer. And obviously Max actually has extreme speed on his uh, Arcanine versus the Chiyu, but Taran obviously knows that, so will he predict that? Will he have to make a play? He does just click protect. Goes to protect, just keeps the, uh, the Chi safe again. Um, however, he has to hope if the rock slide doesn't take out Arcan, that threat will still be there the next turn. Yeah, Max playing it safe, uh, clicking ex extreme speed into the Chi Yu. Tarn go for a rock slide into the Baxcalibur. Oh, this oh, is the misses Baxcalibur. Baxcalibur. An Icicle Crash goes into the Great Task. And it's a lot of damage there. Um, and once again, surely I'm um, clicking extreme speed again. Yeah, and Taran knows uh, the game was uh, unfortunately lost from that position. Yeah, so uh, Max takes the win in that round. Um, so wh what do you think uh, Taran needs to bring into this next game? Then? I have to say what different things Taran should bring, because that game really came down to turn one. Their Moongus yeah. died turn one and did nothing. Yeah, exactly. And I, I suppose, you know, it's been... We've, we've seen three games now where that Amungus hasn't really contributed uh, to the match. Is it, is it time to put it away, or do you think he still um, adamantly will bring it? It's a really tough decision, because obviously it puts so much pressure. Mm, if I was thinking maybe you could bring it in the back, if you're that scared of it uh, losing it turn one, um, Taron just can't allow something to go down turn one. It's as simple as that. Yeah, exactly. And you know, when If you lose something in turn one, you, you very much are playing catch-up. Um, you know, maybe he predicts uh, this will turn that it's going to double up into the Among Us again. Um, but let's go back into the game and find out. 
So obviously we're just in a team preview now. If I'm Taron, I have to think, I can't let that turn one happen again. Yeah, exactly. And also, it's interesting to note he didn't bring the tailwind. So he, but uh, yes, his great task did outspeed the flat main. But does he bring the tailwind just to assure that his other his other threats can outspeed? It's a difficult decision because the Merkur really can't do much apart from tailwind. Obviously, tailwind's a huge factor. But I don't think Max is really too bothered per se. He, he brings out the Great Tusk in the Flutter Main, and Max bringing out the Back Scalibur in the Flutter Main. So um, immediately, both Flutter Mains have got a target that they can um, hit for super effective damage. Of course, that Back Scalibur can uh, terrestrialize as, as can the Great Tusk. Yeah, I really like this decision by Taron, putting a lot of pressure on Max uh, with the Great Tusk. So obviously, the Great Tusk is Scarf, and the Flutter Main is a choice specs. He's forcing Max to make a decision here. Yeah, exactly. He. Max needs to uh, needs to almost sort of respond. Uh, does he trust like the back Scalabar? Uh, but then it's weak to Great Tusk um, headlong rush, or does he uh, does he protect? Does he switch it out? Really, I, I think the the onus is on Max to respond to what Taron's presenting in front of him. Yeah, but if you're Max, you could also just play defensively and la let Taron show his cards per se. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's another thing as well. Maybe uh, maybe double protect just to sort of scout, see what happens. Not, not looking like we're going to see a double protect. Uh, the turn ends, and we will see a terror. And terror's going into into the flutter main. Which, which flutter main? We're not too sure at the moment. Yeah, we're going into going into the fairy again. I think that's quite a safe option. He, you know, um, does good damage against both of them. So that's into that's Taran's, uh flutter main terror, and the headlong rush into Max's back caliber, and dropping the defense and. Oh, and Taron's Flutterman is faster than Max's. This will get, looks like you'll get the KO on the back Scalabar. Back Scalabar down, not making any contribution to this game. Um, Max is responding with a Shadow Ball. Oh, no. Wow, and Taron in such a strong position there. Yeah, really turned it around. Uh, we were speaking about turn one. Taron can't afford to have anything uh, be carried in the first turn, and... He responds probably in the best way possible. Yeah, carrying something of Max's, and uh, now Max is in a tough position because with such an offensive team like Taron's, once you lose something, it's really tough to come back. Yeah, exactly. And um, you know, um, Max knows that his uh, Fluttermane is going after the Great Tusk and after Taron's Fluttermane, and Tinglu going last of all. So he really has to sort of um, adjust up, and and hopefully he can catch uh, maybe catch something on the protect um, or catch something off guard. Yeah, the good thing is, obviously, Max still has Terra, so he can either save it for later, or he can say, uh, use it now. Uh, that's one advantage he has over Taron. Obviously, Taron's already revealed his cards with the Terra Fairy and Fluttermane. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, he just, does, he, does he go for Terra and that Fluttermane? You don't think he would. It's quite a risky move to get the maximum output. Oh, did, uh, I believe that was a... F was that a Fissure he clicked? Uh, so going, for, uh, going for a Protect on the Fluttermane. Headlong Head Rush into goes him. into Ting Lu. That's about forty percent, and it really depends on what this flutter main clicks. It doesn't gleam. It's been locked into doesn't gleam. Does this take it out? It's an mm. eight assault vest Ting Lu. Ting Lu just Ting -Lu survives, and it clicks the fissure oh. and misses. Uh, unfortunately, it does. I don't think it's going to be able to see another turn. You you live by the fissure, you die by the fissure. <laughs> yeah, it's a difficult decision. Obviously, fissure has such high highs but such low lows. And if you're in Max's position, perhaps it might have been safer just to click a attack like Heavy Slam into the Fluttermane to remove it from the field. Yeah, it's a low chance to hit, but if you think of the momentum swing it would have brought had it had it landed, um, it, you know, he, he would have managed to sort of um, break a hole open that team by bringing down the Great Tusk. But as it misses, he's got such a big hole that the uh, Great Tusk is minus, uh, minus two defense. going to be even more now. Yeah, and sometimes, obviously, Max is a 1-0 up, so you can afford to hit those risks sometimes with the fissure. Yeah, exactly. He's got that. He's got that cushion of a game, um, and you know that's where that's where we see the fissures coming at risk. Um, but it looks like now it's not going to be paying off as a uh, Ting as it gets the K on Ting Lu. Yeah, and it looks like we're going to go to a game three unless uh, Max can pull off uh, a miracle here. Yeah, I'd be very. So I, Ark and I can do a lot of things, but um, I think. So. Getting these two down by itself is going to be out of its reach. Yeah, so perhaps Max may think about his uh, strategy for uh, game three right now. And going for the protect. And, oh, he's, uh, he still thinks he's got a chance in this game. Yeah, yeah, he has a, 
a lot of faith within his arc and I, and it's, um, but I, I don't think it's going to survive this. I mean, it's staring down. For one, the headlong rush. We know it goes first. Yes, extreme speed. Will it? I don't think it will get the KO even on a minus three defense. Yeah, I think I'm with you. I don't think uh, Arcana has the offensive power to break through the Great Tusk. Uh, it doesn't even go through the Flutter Main, and surely this is going to be the end. Oh, interesting information we get. I think that's really good for Max to learn that the uh, great, uh, great Tusk that doesn't uh, faint the Arcana after a minus one headlong rush. Yeah, yeah, and if he'd, you know, he'd been forfeited at the first time, he wouldn't have seen that. So maybe going into this third game, Max has that information, like you say, he can he can play off that now. There's something he has, uh, a minus one attack. Yeah, and obviously we've had both games decided by a turn one play. Yeah, exactly, and it shows that that turn one, if you play it right, the rest of the game, your opponent's catching up if you make a good play that first turn. Um, so I think... They, I think they both maybe will be a bit more cautious. Uh, I think we've seen a very aggressive plays that team won, and I think they both will throw a bit more caution now going into this next uh, next match. Yeah, when you've got teams as offensive as these two, you really have to make the right decisions turn one. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how uh, Max responds in game three. Will he go back to his game one plan? Will Taron change his plan? Will Taron go with the same plan he won game two with? I I'm not sure. Uh, it's, it's really tough to uh, call it now. Yeah, so I mean, they both see what e each other are capable of. Um, so I think going into this game, um, you know, I think they both have to certainly consider and respect the what their opponents are going to bring. Um, and obviously, always there's that Fisher uh, hanging on in the back. Let's yeah. go to the uh, what's uh, what's happening. Yeah, and one thing I think Max has to realize now is his Fluttermane is probably slower than Terran's Fluttermane. Yeah, that's an important thing as well. Uh, Taron hasn't, still hasn't brought that Merc Crash. There's still no uh, to control the speed. Um, I suppose, you know, knowing he's faster, he has that comfort. And Merc Crash, you know, can stay. So everything on his team is an immediate threat. Yeah, and obviously both leading with Fluttermane and uh, they're Intimidate um, on uh, either side. Obviously Fluttermane Gyarados on Taron's side, Fluttermane Arcanine on Max's side. Yeah, and it's very interesting, um, very interesting to know because obviously in the matchup, Arcanine at a disadvantage at the moment um, with Gyarados and even Fl his Fluttermane as well. So you, you think, as things stand, Taron's got a slight upper hand, um, but we'll see um, how the switches factor in. Yeah, I think th hopefully this game isn't decided by turn one, but uh, I like I think it might be. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see once again and say, will they be a bit more cautious just knowing um, what happened t uh, on turn one of both the other games? Uh, but we'll, uh, yeah, we'll see if they... They both go the same, very aggressive plays, or if they just wait and see what their opponent's going for, um, hope, maybe hope for their opponent to reveal their terror early. Yeah, Max is going to switch his Arcanine out, uh, probably threatened by the Gyarados' waterfall. Going to Ting Lu, though, so another water weakness. Yeah, but I, I think uh, Ting Lu maybe should be able to survive a bit better, and um, also weakening the Fluttermane as well. So I think that's a terror on Terran's side, I believe, into the Fluttermane. Uh, but, which is obviously uh, the fairy. That fairy, so it can just, and also that helps it get over the um, the vessel of ruin. Yeah, really gonna mitigate the damage reduction. Oh, and the Gyarados helping hand. Helping hand, for maybe fully ignoring the uh, the vessel of ruin now. Oh, but Max just clicking protect. And it really depends on what fairy move he's going for here. Moonblast oh. into the flutter main. Wow, Max really. Surviving that turn. I was really worried about Dazzling Gleam coming out there into the Tinglu that just came in. But Max has survived it and now he knows what Taron is locked into. Yeah, predicting really well. I mean, there's nothing on his team that wants to take a Moonblast. Um, uh, particularly if there's a helping hand. But that uh, that Tinglu getting in for free is really big. Because, um, you know, it can heavy slam into the flat main, which will really cause it... Um, which most likely be a one-hit KO. Yeah, and the Tinglu actually does threaten a KO on the... Uh, Fluttermane, of course, for the Gyarados actually threatens it back. So uh, it's really tough uh, decision here. Max might consider terroring. Really depends on his situation. And it's taking away the Fluttermane, maybe sensing the uh, the heavy slam. And in comes back the Amoongus. We didn't see the Amoongus last game, um, but it'll be interesting what it contributes now. Yeah, but I think it's good to bring it in the back this time. Uh, game one, I think Taran really banned on getting the call right, and once they got it wrong, they were in the a bad position, but now Taron's not in a too, uh, not an awful position. It can threaten the spore on both of Max's slots. 
Yeah, exactly. And the, that pressure and the uh, the waterfall going into the Tinglu, not doing a lot of damage. Uh, that intimidate certainly making a make a big difference. And then we got a heavy slam going into the Amunga slot. Yeah. So actually, um, Max's Arcanine uh, actually has the safety goggles item, which uh, for me it's uh, immune to spore and rage powder. Yeah, and obviously Taran using his terror, so he's not able to uh, terror that Mungus out of its fire weakness. Um, so, you know, we'll, um, he's really got to worry about having a flare bits into it. Um, but also worrying about any potential will o wisps going into the uh, Gyarados. Yeah, and Gyarados is actually is in a really strong position, hitting both opponents with super effective moves, potentially. Yeah, exactly. Even after the, uh, the Intimidate drop, you think it's still going to hurt. And here we see it going into the Arcanine, doing fi about 50%. Okay, so that Gyarados is faster than the Arcanine, which shows that it... Oh, the Willow has missed into the, into the Moongo slot. It'd be interesting to see as, as to why that went into Maybe get, trying to get um, a bit of passive damage into it. And the Ruination doing half to Gyarados. And Gar yeah, the Gyarados is um, really looking um, looking bad now. It's into, you know, into half health. You, you really worry about uh, what's going to happen to it. And particularly Among Us, once again, it'd be just being a sick duck for Arcanine. Yeah, and obviously the Gyarados actually moved before the Arcanine, so we assume it w if it was a, if it wasn't a speeder, the Gyarados probably has more speed investment than the Arcanine. Yeah, that would be the case. In which case, um, yeah, maybe it can circumvent uh, the Among Us, uh, the Among Us's weakness. Um, but does he risk that? Does he risk it being a speed tie, or does he just presume the Gyarados is faster? Yeah, and obviously the Tinglu is a soul vest, so it cannot protect itself. So Max decides to switch it out. Coming, uh, coming out and to the back Excalibur. Back Excalibur once again be able to threaten the uh, the Among Us and being a lot more threatening uh, to the Gyarados as well with uh, possibly if it goes into a Glade Rush. Uh, Taran just decided to waterfall into the back Excalibur, doing negligible damage even with the Life Orb. Ah, oh, but he does get a Spore off, yeah. and that back Excalibur is going to go to sleep. And that's what Taran needed game one. He really needed that Spore, and once he didn't get it, he lost the game. Now he's got that spore off. Backscalibur has to sleep for at least one turn. Yeah, exactly. And he, keep, you know, um, as you say, gets that correct, holding it in the back, not being too, uh, not rushing too much, not being too greedy with the spore, and just playing a bit more patiently. Yeah, not just that. If Taran decides, he can also just pull and puff into his own Gyarados. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He can uh, get the recovery, but he doesn't. He brings the Among Us out, and he's going to be a uh, great Tusk coming in. That's, I, I find that really interesting. I think maybe Taran just wants to change his offensive position. Oh, that extremely does not kill the Gyarados. And the Gyarados yeah, is going to the revenge. Waterfall, which gets the KO. Yes, and but the Gyarados will obviously faint because of the Life Orb. Yeah, the Life Orb recoil. So, however, that Great Tusk is out now, which we know is quick, and we know it could get a headlong rush into the uh, the Backscalibur super, for super effective damage, even if it terrors. Yeah, and obviously Backscalibur burning its mandatory sleep turn. Uh, obviously, Max is trying to decide what he's going to go to. Decides to go into the Flutter main. And Taran going to his flutter main. So once again, the flutter main mirror. I think something we've seen, uh, we've seen a lot this series is a flutter main mirror. Um, but we do know that uh, Taran's is faster, as is his great tusk. So um, uh, Max's flutter main really on the back foot. Yeah, Max is not in a great position here. He's uh, outsped by both threats on Taran's team. So uh, he needs to really come up with a play that's gonna get his foothold back in the match. And the back is kind of really in a dilemma. Does it terror uh, to avoid the flutter main weakness, but then leave it open to a great tusk weakness? Yeah, it's a really tough decision. Obviously, it's only burnt one sleep turn. It's not. There's no guarantee it wakes up this turn. Yeah, it may be a terror just to uh, just keep it asleep. And that next turn, you know, uh, then he's played his hand. Then Taran knows what his back scalibur is and isn't weak to. We will see the terror uh, terror on Max's side. I believe it was to the... I would believe it was into the back Excalibur, which is the poison type. Yeah, it's really, really banking on that back Excalibur waking up. Yeah, I think the game might uh, be heavily decided by this turn. Yeah, this could, uh, this could certainly be. I'm sure he's hoping and praying. Max is going. Protect. Yeah, safe protect on the flutter main. Does the back Excalibur wake up? We will see. Oh, the headlong rush into the back Excalibur, and, and it goes down. And great prediction there by the uh, by the great Tusk going into that headlong rush. Um, I think. He, once again, he, he forced Max's hand. Really, uh, there wasn't a lot of a uh, lot of choice for Max. Yeah, Taran really, yeah, Taran really probably doubling up into the back Excalibur slot to uh, ensure that uh, KO. And Tinglu coming out. Yeah, Tinglu not looking too good in, uh, in this uh, field, obviously. 
maybe Max hoping for a lucky Fisher. He tried it the last game uh, to no effect, so maybe he's due one this match. Yeah, I think maybe that could have an impact, but it's still going to be really tough for Max from this position. Headlong Rush once again coming in, doing a lot of damage. And we know Taran's bottom lane is faster, we presume. Yep, and it just goes for Dusty Gleam, and I believe Ting Lu will go down here. Ting Lu it goes. does. However, Max's uh, Fluttermane is now free to move. Uh, you presume it's going to be taking out that Great Tusk. Which it does, but uh, only does about 40% to Terran's uh, Fluttermane. And Max's Flutter, uh, Fluttermane can't hit super effectively, but it can be hit back. And also that Amunga, so Terran could even protect and spore if he wants to. Yeah, I think Max sees the writing on the wall. And there we go. Uh, forfeits and Taron advances through. Uh, really strong performance from uh, Taron there, I think. A really interesting set of games. We had game one and game two decided by turn one plays, and then game three was more of a balanced game where there were a lot more turns, a lot more decisions made, and in the end, Taron did run away with it, perhaps, but uh, it was a uh, it was a more long, uh, prolonged game. I think another uh, trend we're seeing we're seeing with his Among Us is. It can once it gets that crucial spore, he manages to get away the game. Um, you know, when he played early on stream, it was that one against the um, the uh, sucker punch Chien Pao. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. And then getting now into the uh, the back Scalable, which w was a big threat, sort of almost rendering it um, rendering it irrelevant for the game, just leaving it spotter for um, Great Tusk to cleave through. Yeah, Amungus is one of those Pokemon that some people actually find hard to use, um, obviously because. It's only attacking move is normally Pollen Puff, which is a 90 base power bug move, which isn't the best in uh, to most Pokemon in the meta. But obviously, Spore is such a sh strong tool in the meta. You really need to learn how to use it and really learn, need to learn how to switch it in at the right times and protect at the right times. Yeah, exactly. And, and Taran certainly has those other hit. He had the Great Tusk. He has the Flutter Wayne. He has those heavy hitters. Um, so Among Us, I think you can almost afford for that Among Us to be passive. Um, but I, th I think also... He needs to bring it at the right time. He needs it to do the right things for him. Yeah, definitely. I think it really helps with his team because it buys his offensive threat another extra turn. So it allows his Great Tusk to maybe click Headlong head Rush another time. It allows his Flutterman to click Dazzling Gleam another time. And all sometimes all games need is one more Dazzling Gleam or one more Headlong Rush. Yeah, exactly. And then it certainly proved to be the case. I mean, even that Wonder Game, we got three defense drops. And purely because it had it had its partner Fluttermane going first, it had its partner Among Us, it was able to sort of um, go uh, go into those moves. Um, anyway, we're going through a short break now. And, uh... Yeah, obviously we'll bring that game to you shortly. Uh, I think the players just need a well-deserved rest. Yeah, exactly. Um... Yeah, so um, obviously with Taron being in finals, uh, they're used to being in finals. <laughs> they've uh, they've already won a regional this season. They uh, made top eight in Malmo. How do you think they're feeling? Yeah, I think um, it's just a case, you know, you can't underestimate the opponent. Um, you always have to make, you know... Um, I don't think he, he. I don't think he thinks it's uh, clinched anyway. Um, but at the same time, you you, you have to pre um, you have to prepare and you know, but you have to look back as well and, and be proud of your um, your achievements. Yeah, and Menelik, of course, kind of a amazing story. I believe it was the eighth seed who's now in the finals. Yeah, exactly. Menelik shows you know just um, just because you go um, you go down that initial seed. And you, or you know, if you're first in that seed, we saw Power was first seed and went out, and um, it looks like he's been leapfrogged uh, by Menelik. Yeah, and I I completely agree with you on the seeding. Um, I don't think it really matters. Uh, you just need to make it to the top cut, and then once you make it there, it's uh one ga uh one game and decide your fate. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, let's cut for a uh, short break, and we'll be back soon. <laughs>
and we're back for the finals of the Orpington Premier Challenge. It's Menlik versus Taron. Um, it's been a long day for both of them, but here they come. They can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, no rest for Taron. Uh, just playing a set uh, about five minutes ago, and he's straight into the finals. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, yeah, back to the grindstone for him. Um, what do you think going into this matchup? What uh, do you think either of them have got to look out for? Yeah, so one thing I noticed on uh, Taron's team is the Spore Threat versus Menlik's team. Uh, Menlik has five things that are going to be hit by Spore, apart from the Dondozo, which is Force of Terror if it wants to avoid Spore. Yeah, exactly. It's maybe another case of just, you know, forcing to show his um, show his hand with the Terror. Or, you know, um, going all in with the Chiyu, hoping that it does, uh, the Among Us doesn't Terror and trying to blast away the... Uh, once again, they could easily force each other's Terror early game here. Yeah, I think it is one of those games who blinks first with the Terror, I would say. Um, also, I think the Iron Bundle has a decent uh, chance in this game. Obviously, uh, can threaten the Chiyu is faster than the Fluttermane, can threaten the Gyarados, threatens the Murkrow, threatens the Amoongus somewhat, and Kanoko the Great Tusk. Yeah, exactly, and that's um, yeah, certainly something they're going to have to watch out for. And um, Milik always has that Dondozo in the back, which you always need to be uh, be careful of. Um, you know, does does Taron bring the Haze Murkrow? I think a player like Taron is so used to playing against Dondozo builds, he may have ways to beat a Dondozo without Haze or Murkrow. Yeah, I mean, we see all the Dondozos we've seen today, you know, there hasn't been any Hazes, there hasn't been any clear smogs. It's just been a case of muscling through it, and it seems to be affected more often than not. Yeah, and we're just getting uh, into the game right now, so it'll be interesting to see what leads, because... As we said previously, Taron's games were decided by the lead a lot of the time. Yeah, exactly. Taron seems to sort of win or lose the games on turn one. And Taron turned to lead with Great Tusk uh, Fluttermane, which really has served him well this tournament. Yeah, exactly. Go once again, going that. Uh, we know that the uh, Great Tusk outspeeds most things. Um, however, Melnick does have that Dondozo stare out staring, staring down Taron's Pokemon. And that Chiyu's out there. Does he attack the Chiyu slot? Does he think the Chiyu is going to switch out immediately to Tatsugiri? Yeah, if I'm Menelik, uh, perhaps you play defensively again. Uh, you can just double protect and uh, see what Taron locks into. There's no risk to doing that. Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, that Chiyu is fr almost free to move because, uh, you know, mo nine times out of ten, you would predict it to go into the um, swap out for the Tatsugiri. We are seeing a Terror on uh, Taron's Fluttermane into the Fairy Tub, of course. We've seen him use that multiple times today. Yeah, and it served him well. Um, you know, it just... Hits out those dazzling gleams, hits out those moon blasts um, strongly, and Don Dozo goes for a protect, um, saving itself later. Hopefully, uh, not wanting to catch an error and moon blast. And Chu deciding not to protect this turn. We'll have to see how well this goes. And the Great Tusk just hitting a rock side, doing about eighty percent to the Chiyu, and the Fluttermane getting the dazzling gleam. That Chiyu is down. That Chiyu is going down, and um, very uh, very safe for Towns. Go for those spread moves. You know, for Tatsugiri, if that's when he comes in, he's still hitting the Dondozo. If the Chiyu stayed in as it did, he also managed to get it. Either way, he knows he's going to hit, um, going to hit both Pokemon. Yeah, men like kind of losing the Chiyu for free, unfortunately. Um, it's not over, of course. Uh, he's still got his Tatsugiri, um, which we assume he'll bring in uh, soon. Um, but obviously, the game is not down yet. Obviously, men like also knows what Town's going to click. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, he knows both of them are choice locked. Both of them really have showed their uh, Pokemon have showed their hand in terms of what they're going to do. Um, we just have to see what Menlik really brings out. Does he go for? Does he uh, protect that Dondozo Tatsugiri if he brings it? Does he save that for later? So Menlik has the Iron Bundle, which makes you think maybe the Tatsugiri isn't in the back. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe possibly. You know, he's trying to sort of um, fake out Taran. Yeah, it could be. Uh, oh, we're going to see the Terra Poison. Uh, Perhaps on the on the iron bundle, it's not it's not guaranteed. I think Menlik's still considering it, uh, just weighing up his options at the moment. Yeah, I mean it's certainly um, doing well against the um, the matchup with Fluttermane. Um, however, it'll worsen its matchup for Great Tusk. So once again, a bit like the Bat uh we saw previously against Taron, really sort of either way, it's uh, at a disadvantage. We see the Amoongus come out for the Fluttermane, and we will see the Terror on Menelik. Uh, we'll see what it's on. And it is on the Iron Bundle into the Poison type. And we see that Poison Iron Bundle come out. Um, yeah, as I say, I presume this is mainly for the uh, for the Plus Main matchup. But also that means um, that the uh, Mel uh, Melek doesn't have anything that's Spore-proof. 
Oh, but it just takes down the Great Tusk in one hit. There we go. And we'll see, um, see how much damage this wave crash does into Among Us. A little bit of damage, but I don't think we expected anything, uh, any great um, health being taken away for it, really. Yeah, so obviously not ideal for Tyrant, but uh, Menlik has now used Terra. There are no Spore immunities. Yep. Um, so really that Edondozo is at the mercy of a Spore. Yeah, and obviously Taran bringing in his offensive threat, which is the Fluttermane. Yeah, and he has that poison up, and uh, now he doesn't have to worry about getting hit by any ground moves. He knows he's got that resistance to uh, to any moon blasts, to any uh, dazzling gleams. Yeah, so we'll have to see what uh, Menelik decides to click here. Uh, I think if I was him, I'd probably try and attack into the Fluttermane. You can't let that get too many turns off. Yeah, exactly. And here we go, the uh, Tatsugiri coming in, and that commander going off. Um, you. Yeah, oh, once again, you're going to have to hope that he goes um, goes into the Flutter main, brings it down. Uh, that Mungus, that Mungus can't do any direct damage back. It can, it can click Spore, um, but yeah, Pollen Puff isn't really going to be taking down a plus two Dondozo. Yeah, and it's not got clear smog, so Menelik isn't super threatened. Terran just going for Rage Powder, I think very safe play. Yeah, definitely. Uh, keeps his Flutter main safe. Terran clicking Shadow Ball into the Tatsugiri slot, and Dondo getting a free Wave Crash off into the Among Us doing a lot of damage. Doing a lot of damage there. Um, really good. Um, yeah, that, that, um, that Among Us really taking a lot of damage. And uh, now he's decided to go for a Rage Powder again. Does uh, that Among Us being taken out? Or does he save the Flutter main? It's a tough decision for uh, Mendelik because obviously his main attacking moves are Wave Crash and Order Up. So it's really difficult. N nothing's going to hit the Amungus too hard. There we go. We do see that Murkrow, and um, we may see the Haze. We may see the, the traditional way of getting rid of Dondozo. Yeah, that's a really interesting bring from Taran, having the back Murkrow. And here comes the Wave Crash, and will this do enough to take it out? Oh. Leaves it a bit of health. And um, if you're Melek, surely you're sweating now, because Amungus can get off another Rage Powder, and that Murkrow can easily go for that Haze without, uh, without even sort of um, fainting. Yeah, Taran has a lot of options here. I think Haze is obviously one of the main options we would like to see. Yeah, just clicks Haze. Yeah, there we um, go, and that Dondozo turns into a normal Dondozo. And I think Taran's banking on uh, Amungus taking one hit. Oh, and it does. And oh, it does. He should probably should get off Spore here. Oh, and it does, and Taran's in such a strong position right now. Yeah, he's really sort of undone that Dondozo. So if he was looking down, it's looking a big threat to the Flutter main, to the, even to the Amungus. Um, and now going back, going back to sort of its normal Dondozo <laughs> form almost. Yeah, it's really uh, difficult for Mel Mendelik to uh, think about what to do right now. Um, Taran, uh, yeah, just to, to shut the Amungus. Amungus has done his job. Yeah, exactly. It's... Um, now bringing in that flutter main, and even if that Dondozo wakes up, uh, it may not necessarily get the KO. Taran getting the speed advantage, and it's nice to see that in the finals that the uh, the Tailwind has come back. Yeah, I think I think that's a pretty uh, smart idea. Obviously, um, we know Menelik's uh, Tatsugiri is a scarf set. Yeah, exactly. and another interesting thing to note that uh, the Iron Bundle is still in the back for Menelik, and um, Taran re only really has one. Um, heavy hitter in terms of that flutter main yeah but how many does he really need if the flutter main is doing so much damage to uh, Menelik's team yeah exactly and he does set off the process synthesis for the special attack boost this is going to do a lot of damage here onto the Dondozo and the one hit KO wow and the Oko there really difficult for Menelik to uh, deal with and uh, Tatsugiri on the field with Iron Bundle, so it's not over for Menlik yet, but um, certainly the advantage uh, does sit with Taran at the moment. Yeah, I think Menelik needs some uh, fortune to get from this position because the Fluttermane has a pretty free Moonblast into Tatsugiri. Yeah, exactly, and, and um, you have to think that uh, Tatsugiri isn't surviving that <laughs> that Moonblast. Yeah, and uh, Iron Bundle maybe has to bank on getting a freeze, perhaps? Yeah, I think that's that's probably going to be uh, going to be its main sort of output of luck. And, and we see we... no protects on Taran's side. Taran just going for Moonblast into the Tatsugiri slot as we predicted. Yeah, and we, uh, yeah, a Protosynthesis, choice specs, <laughs> then that carries every single time. Mercury decided to get offensive and use Brave Bird, doing about half time bundle. Yeah, and Taran did say that he um, he did prefer using the um, Brave Bird because it it does a bit more damage. 
uh, free strike going to Mercro, no freeze. So Menelik deciding uh, the game's over and he's going to maybe regroup for game two. Yeah, exactly. And um, so what's your Nemesis plan for this game two? It's a tough one because I think he played really well for the early game. But at the end of the day, it came down to a few rolls. And once the Amoongus survived and got the spur off, the game was over. Yeah, exactly. And it was interesting once again to see that um, that Haze Mercro did come and say that all of the Dondozers we've seen today, um, people haven't used the Haze. People haven't tried to clear the stat drop. They've just tried to take out the Dondozo regardless. Yeah, the only thing I could think of maybe would be trying using the pieces separately rather than using them together. Yeah, exactly. And... Um, you know, maybe that's the case, or maybe even he goes for that mortal spin. You know, he has that option available. Yeah, just looking at uh, Menelik's team, I'm trying to think of uh, other options he could consider. I think the Iron Bundle, again, was really doing a lot of damage. Um, perhaps it could be paired with the Chiyu from the start uh, to threaten Taran's team at the start. Yeah, and let's go into game two to see how that plays out. Yeah, obviously, we're just on team preview. Uh, Menlik taking a bit more time to think about his team this time. Yeah, big pressure. I mean, he's a game down in the finals. I I would like to be in his position. Yeah, uh, and he's really got that tough decision. Does he bring the Dondozo uh, core or does he decide to bring something else? Yeah, exactly. If he, uh, you know, if he leaves that home, then um, he has the he has the um, Taran. Maybe bring the Murkrow. And the Murkrow hasn't got too much to do if it comes in. It sets up Tailwind. Um, Brave Bird, I don't think does too much damage on on um, a lot of Menlex Pokemon. I can't see the Dragonite fading to a Brave Bird. Glamora resists it, and um, even Chiyu, I don't think is going to take too much. Yeah, I definitely think uh, one thing Menlex has to have a way to answer is the Fluttermane Great Tusk uh, lead. Charon's used that so many times, he has to think of a way to at least not get something KO to turn one. Yeah, exactly, and the speed on those two. He knows they're most likely going to be moving first. He knows his Pokemon are more often than not going to be eating a hit from both of them. So, um, yeah, he really needs to... Uh, if he sees those two, I think he's going to be on, put on the back foot. Yeah, so we're just going into the game right now. And uh, once we see the leader matchups, we'll be able to analyse more. I th I'm assuming Taran probably went with the same lead. I, I presume so. Like I say, I mean, it, like we said, he's um, shown him so much success previously. There wouldn't be any reason for him not to. I don't know. So he's decided to change up. Obviously, he keeps the Fluttermane, but he's decided to go uh, Murkrow. However, I actually think that's a really good decision in this turn, because uh, if Murkrow kicks Tailwind, he'll have the speed advantage for this turn. Yeah, exactly. And um, uh, Menelik going for the Chiyu and the Iron Bundle. And um, do you think um, do you think Taran's predicting that there's a uh, Dozagiri in the back? Or? To be honest, I'm not sure. I think Taran maybe just wanted the speed advantage on his Fluttermane just to get the chip damage early. And perhaps uh, clean up late with uh, the Great Task, if he has it, of course. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and that's, I'm sure that'll be a big big deciding factor in the game, whether the Dondozo is there or not. Yeah, so Menlik really has to consider what move to click here. And I think Taran's also considering, uh, because obviously the Fluttermane is choice spec, so once it clicks a move, it is locked into that. Yeah, exactly. And we know that the uh, Iron Bundle can resist Fairy. We know it goes into the Poison, as it does. Poison Terror. Um, yeah, so I suppose really, really decides whether that's uh, it goes for a moon blast or does it lock into a sh uh, shadow ball. Yeah, and we also see the terror from Taran's side. I'm going to assume it's into the flutter. I mean, he's done that a lot today. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think that's a safe choice to go for. Um, even if it does go into the uh, the body that's resisted, I still don't think a moon blast, terror moon blast, it really wants to take. Yeah, but of course the Chi is there, so maybe Iron Bundle might uh be under threat from the Moonblast. Here we go. It does and Gleam. Uh, probably just a safe. Does and Gleam doing sig significant damage to Menelik's time. Doing Great. about 75 to Chiyu and 80% to Bundle. And Freeze Dry into the Murkrow. The Murkrow surviving. Chiyu goes for that Overheat. Does a lot of damage. Um, Fluttermane is down turn one. I think that's something that often doesn't get considered into the, um, the Chiyu as well. The Overheat Chiyu can do so much damage. Yeah, and Menelik did what he had to do. He removed the Fluttermane turn one. Whatever it took, he removed it. Yeah, exactly. However, one threat's going for another. Uh, in comes that great task, but and definitely has the speed advantage. So it'll be interesting to see how Menelik plays around this. Yeah, I think Tarun uh, sees an easy EQ play here when obviously his uh, Murkrow is flying and uh, both of Menelik's Pokemon are on the ground. 
So, but maybe Tyron sees another play that he might want to click into. Maybe he doesn't see the obvious play. Yeah, I mean, the rock slide as well, maybe it does a lot of damage to uh, Chi, and I think it, that would be enough to take the KO on bundle, um, especially if it being on health it is at the moment. And um, he does swap out the Chi Yu, so maybe predicting. Dragonite, we didn't see that last game. No, Dragonite, uh, Dragonite hasn't come. I think it's the first Dragonite we may have seen today. Yeah, I believe so, actually. And uh, Mercury going for Sunny Day, getting the Protosynthesis boost on that Great Tusk. So, yeah, I believe it's just an attack boost. There we go. And Rock Slide. Yeah, so Rock Slide, I think, was probably a better lock into uh, just in case of the Dragonite. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Is the Dragonite in a focus or is it multi? Oh, it's multi scale. There we go. So, breaking that multi scale now. So, it really, this next Rock Slide is, uh, really doesn't want to take. Yeah, it's really difficult for um, Menelik here. Um, obviously, Taran still, I believe Taran still has the speed advantage. So, um, I'm, I'm, Menelik has to deal with that somehow. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, Menelik really needs to uh, really needs to put himself in a favourable position here. I think the Great Tusk needs to go, um, and he can't tear anymore as well. So that Dragonite is going to be weak to that Rock Slide. Yeah, the Dragonite, normally a really good answer for the Great Tusk. Unfortunately, really not a great answer here. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it's uh, being put at a disadvantage. But we'll see what he does with it. I mean, hopefully an extreme speed will get the KO on the Murkrow if he chooses to go that way. Yeah, if he kills, the, uh, if he takes the Murkrow out, obviously, then uh, Terran probably can't reset the Tailwind. And it does choose to do that. Yeah, there we go. The Tailwind now being on limited time. But it, it, so it is going to have to eat a Rock Slide. Yeah, and Rockstar hitting both parties, doing significant damage to Dragonite, doing about 40% to Glora and getting the Toxic Debris up. Yeah, so Glora switching, getting that Toxic Debris, so whatever comes in now is going to um, is going to be poisoned. Oh, uh, the Amoongus, no, um, swallowing up the Toxic Spikes. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not I'm not too angry with that because it did force the Amoongus out. Yeah, and to be honest, I don't think Menlink was banking on uh, toxic, the Toxic Debris anyway. I think that was just a happy coincidence. Yeah. And Menlink shouldn't feel like he's... Uh, lost this game he's still got everything in his team obviously they're weakened but he's still got everything on the team he's still got a great chance to win this game yeah exactly he's got that priority um in that extreme speed uh you know he can go he can hit something for a great it's a choice bound extreme speed it's, it's going to do big damage to whatever it hits yeah and obviously we've seen that glamour doing so much damage in previous matches yeah exactly uh and the more you know the mortal spin comes in it can do that poison it can um put the great tusk on a timer Menlik deciding to switch out and going to Chi Yu. And here we go, see what the uh, what happens. Rock slide. Missing the Chi Yu. It's Chi Yu essentially coming in for free, it seems. And not doing a lot of damage to the Glamora either, so luck really was on Menlik's side there. Yeah, I think. Oh, but the Glamora flinched. Oh, uh, spoke too soon. Yeah, kind of a, a good and a bad situation because the Chi Yu got in for free, but now Glamora got no damage off. And I think the Great Tusk can just click Rock Slide again. Yeah, but and um, we've seen this before. Taryn gets that Lucky Spore in, and it seems to turn the game around for him. Is that the case now? Uh, Menlik staring down two full health Pokemon. Uh, that Amoongus can go for Rage Powder, keeping the Great Tusk healthy. Yeah, um, I think Menlik might have to uh, be banking on a few more Rock Slide misses. Uh, the Glamora should be able to take maybe one more. Um, and we'll have to see uh, if the Chew can avoid it. If the Chew maybe could protect, oh, which it does choose to do. Yeah, it's keeping safe there. Uh, doesn't want any part of that rock slide. Maybe just hoping the odds go back in its favour. Um, but that Glamora is going to be asleep for this turn, so it is going to be... Um... When it does do significant damage, probably meaning Glamora will faint to the next one. Yeah, um, so I hope maybe sort of won't wake up, won't get the chance to do anything. Yeah, fast asleep. And uh, it'd be interesting to see what the Amoongus does here. It starts to go on the offensive, pollen puffing, and it does not get the KO. One HP, even with a critical hit, and it just goes to show pollen puff really more of a defensive move than an uh, offensive move. Yeah, I think uh, actually probably better for Taran to not get that KO because uh, Rockstar can just guarantee a double KO here. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's if it hits, um, and we'll see now. Oh, it does hit both, yeah, double and hit. both get KO'd. Great for Taran here. Um, and we see the same two threats, you know, the Fluttermane doing the da uh, doing a bit of damage, and then the Great Tusk coming, do the exact same. He, he just this time, instead of leading them, he just staggered them. 
Yeah, Taron's been doing that all day. He's been using <laughs> Fluttermane uh, and Great Tusk as the main offensive uh, mons, and then just having Murkrow and Amoongus to support them, and it's been really successful. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, they're both so uh, they're both such big powerhouses. They hit so hard. They don't. He doesn't really need two other Pokemon in the back. These two can just come out, do the big damage, and then um, Amoongus uh, could put sleep, whatever may be a bit too much of a threat to them. Yeah, Menlink just coming for an extreme team, doing a significant amount of damage. Oh, with a crit, of course. And the Mungus using Rage Powder to protect the Great Tusk. Guys, uh, interesting to see what Iron Bundle does. And the Great Tusk connects with the Rock Side, and it's and a double, double KO. KO. There we go, Dragonite down. Taron Birdie is your champion. There we go. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, wait. Maybe I spoke too soon. <laughs> there we go. Uh, gets the double KO. With two health and there we go. Terran Bunny is our champion. Terran is the champion. What a, uh, what a great performance that was from Taran. He really sort of um, put through the performance there. Played everything right. Um, like we say, didn't see too much of a change in his team, but he played the cards he had very well. Yeah, I think um, Taran's been playing today really well. I think he's only actually had one loss today. Um, and he's been playing some really uh, difficult opponents. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you don't get to this level without playing um, difficult opponents. Yeah. Um, and like, like I say, it, we've seen a situation where he was in a bad situation, he flipped it around, he learned things from his opponent. And I think that's a, a really important thing in these best of three tournaments, to, to use games to learn about your opponent, their, their good habits, their bad habits, and then um, adjust your team accordingly. Yeah, and actually also getting information in the key sets, uh, particularly the semi-final set, I believe, was where the Gyarados was faster than the Arcanine. Yeah, exactly. You know, the, uh, the Arcanine Stadium, what seems futile, but really he was taking good information. And that's, that's what it's about. You know, we have open team sheets, but there's still the EVs are uh, 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 hidden information. So it, there's still information you need to gather. Yeah, and uh, we'll be heading for a quick break and then we'll have our interview with our winner.
Welcome back, and I am here with the winner of the Orpton Premier Challenge, uh, Taryn. Taryn, congratulations. Thank uh, you. What was your Thank thoughts you. going into that final? Um, Don Dezo is tricky. Don Dezo is really yeah. tricky, especially with like the Glamora, the Dragon, it's such strong Pokemon around it. Uh, you really have to play carefully. Like I have Haze on Murkrow, which helps against Dozo, but the rest of the team is just so strong. It's uh, it's always scary to face. Yeah, and in the, uh, we saw that you had a very sort of strong um, strong uh, partnership with the Fluttermane and the Great Tusk, both doing big damage and both really um, sort of outspeeding the opponent and managed to get that big damage yeah. in and it seemed to really serve you well. Yeah, is my idea usually is attack with those two, use Amoongus to get Murkrow in safely and then just try and haze and just trust in Fluttermane and Tusk to, to win games, which they do a lot of the time yes, uh, yeah. and they serve me well. Yeah, exactly. And um, the Among Us, like you say, uh, and the Murkrow, both sort of putting in their part as well, um, especially in the second game, the, the Murkrow with the Haze, sort of mm. shutting down that Dondozo um, so your Fluttermane can clean up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Once I uh, once I saw the Terror on the, the bundle, I was quite happy because I knew that if I needed to, I could Spore it, and then Spore gives me room to Haze, and then once I Haze, Sunny Day Moonblast was just cleaning up the game yeah exactly it was very uh very frightening yeah. i'm sure seeing the, the uh photosynthesis yeah on the specs flutter main um so um how's your um how do you feel sort of been uh going into any future tournaments uh honestly i've you know finished most of my major tournaments for this year it's just premier challenges is you know just to tide me over until worlds now Um shame i can't go to turin or naic but you know i'm feeling pretty good uh we'll see what i can do at worlds i've guaranteed my day to Stop with my finish at Malmo last week. So, yeah, now it's just keeping sharp, going to some locals and seeing what I can do at Worlds. Yeah, so yeah, now um, I suppose the road for Yokohama really starts for you. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Now that all these major tournaments are finished, I can have a bit of a break now, uh, not traveling all the time. And, and yeah, well, see how it goes. Thank you very much for joining us, Taryn. And no uh, once again, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Um, that's all for the stream. Thank you guys very much for joining. I hope you um, enjoyed. And we'll be back tomorrow uh, with Street for Day 2 of the event.